Welcome out to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of the most talented people and some of my favourite people as well. Paul Potts is definitely one of them. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Hey, I'm really good, thank you. Since we last spoke, you've had a movie made about you, you've got a brand new album out. Your life isn't so bad, is it? <laughs> I can't have any complaints. <laughs> I mean, who knew when you went for that audition to be on a reality TV show where you could have been laughed off, you became an international star and one of the biggest comedians in Britain later played you in a movie. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It is kind of bizarre. Um, when I flipped that coin in 2007, I, I didn't dream it would lead where it has. And, and if I'm honest, if, I, if I'd have known, I probably wouldn't have done it. Is that true? Well, yeah, because... I, I don't know what I was risking, and so I've never been much of a risk taker. And when when I flipped the coin, I I didn't think I was taking the risk because I didn't think it was going to lead anywhere. And there you were, just auditioning randomly as everybody else did. Suddenly, America pick up on it, and then it goes gangbusters. It was, it was kind of nuts, but I mean, I'm 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 hugely privileged and um, honoured that I get to do what I love to do, and that for me. It doesn't matter what sphere people do it in, whatever they do is their career. So if they've got a career doing what they love doing, then that for me is the ultimate definition of what success is. Do you wonder why you, I mean, there are many there are many people around the world who can sing as well as you do, but have no fame whatsoever. Do you still pinch yourself as to the fact that there was a certain alchemy that you were in the right place at the right time and it caught on? Um. I do feel very fortunate that I that that I managed to be in a certain position and and and, and seem to connect and that that's the thing about music is that it's it's not all about technical ability it's not all about just singing the right notes it's it, there's there's a lot more to music than that and um, and much of it you wouldn't we wouldn't never know why things connect in the way they do mm. I think if the, if we, if you could bottle that then it would be more it would be more valuable than saffron it's massive for me to be to be still doing it and um, it's um, something that I never even dreamed would ever happen. And then we look at you standing on a stage as big as it was in front of millions of people on TV. Has that become normal yet? Have you managed to overcome the nerves and the anxiety to make that comfortable? Um, I still get nervous. That those don't go away. Um, I, my, my way of dealing with it is to be as last minute as possible being ready. Um, um, it just winds my wife up a treat, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'll, I'll generally get ready as late as possible so I don't have time to think about it um, because it still makes me nervous I'm just, and that, that's never gone away and and the, the thing is if you don't have the nerves anymore then there is the risk that, that you know it doesn't mean anything to you anymore it's become you know a day in day thing and, and you know it's a very special opportunity that I've been given and and um, so, you know, it would be like I didn't value it. I mean, it's, when I was working at, for the mobile phone shop, I, I wasn't particularly nervous before I left for the day. I'd, I'd, do, I'd do my best, and, and I was a reasonably good salesman, but, but it, it didn't mean so much to me that I, that, that I felt nervous before I started the day. Do you still speak to any of those people from the phone shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, we, we meet up from, from time to time. Um, it's just... A matter of chance, because I'm because I'm away a lot. It's, it's just a matter of trying to make it happen um, when they're not away on holiday. It's it's um, it, it's it's just a matter of, 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 of dealing with the logistics of it. All. It's incredible, isn't it? When somebody goes from just being the guy in the office to being an international megastar, have they found it normal yet? Do they treat you the same? No, they treat me exactly the same. I wouldn't want them to be any different. Um, it's. it's you know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm, I'm just me. I mean, I, I, I've had a, a good, good run of good fortune, but it's um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I'm still me, and to my wife, I'm still the same pain in the ass I've always been. <laughs> Did you become more of a pain in the ass when everybody was literally kissing it and telling you you were the best? Did you ever let the ego get the better of you? Um. Well, my wife would just say that I've, I've always been the same pain in the ass anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking the wrong person there, I think? <laughs> <laughs> do you get involved in the showbiz side of it? I mean, do you take advantage of the free tickets here, the free upgrades there, the free hotel rooms here, the free dinners there? Um, no, I'm not really much of a, a party person anyway, so it's not really, it's not, that's not 
not really my scene. Um, I, I do remember somebody commenting on a, a social network expert was commenting on Twitter once that they had to spend the night sat on the same table as me and, and put the Z-list celeb on the end of it. And they had actually hadn't spent any time on the table with me. And I just replied to them, so well, actually, I don't care what list I'm on, I don't go to them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not me, it's not, that's not, that's not my thing. I, I get to do what I love doing, and that's, that's fantastic, mm. but I'm not, I've never been the, the kind of person that really wants to be seen at things. It's, it's not really, it's, I, I never feel comfortable. You come across with great empathy and you seem to be a sensitive man. Are you hurt by criticism? If I were to say I didn't like this album, which isn't the case, by the way, but if I was to say I didn't like something, would it bother you or can you just shrug it off? Um, I think I'd probably act like I shrug, shrug, shrugged it off, but in, in, inside me it would bother me a bit. Mm. And when all the papers were writing personal stuff about your weight or your face or your teeth, did it get to you or did you just think, well, actually, I've won the war because I won the competition, I've got the girl and I'm living the life of Riley? Well, you just have to try and allow it to, to wash over you. Um, it's not always easy, but you, you, you don't have to. Um, in the end, you do have to just let it wash over you. It's it's because, you know, none of it's actually intended to be personal. It's the way it works sometimes and it's a shame though isn't it that people need to talk about you personally more than what you're actually doing which is singing that's what you're there to do it is what it is at the end of the day I think um, but you know I, I, I'm, I'm just really happy that I get to do what I love doing and I've been able to keep doing that over the last seven years and yeah. and you know really looking forward to touring again I'm, 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 I'm but I haven't really I haven't stopped really um, I've done something like 600 shows in the last seven years and and um, so it's going to be great to, to tour the UK again later in the year it's, uh, before that I'm in, in Korea twice and and in Japan as well performing with um, big orchestras so it's it, it's, it's great that, that the show and, 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 and the great British public did get behind me and, and, um, and, and gave me the opportunity that I could never have dreamed of When somebody like Oprah says could you come on my show and sing for me do you pinch yourself? Do you say, no, she must have got the wrong number? Or do you just take the compliment and go and do it? Um, I always pinch myself. I, I do that every day. <laughs> it's an extraordinary life that you've had over the last few years. This new album is out uh, shortly. It's called Home and it's lovely. I'm Yours is the first track that I heard on the album, which again lets you shine. It's not about the overproduced classical sound that some artists right now have got you really do let the voice speak for itself that's important to you isn't it that the words the pronunciation the delivery um is key to your performance well uh, with this album i wanted to challenge the the the, 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 the artificial boundaries in music because to me they are artificial there's, there's this unwritten law that somebody that likes heavy metal can't like opera well that's of course nonsense you can like whatever you want to like it's the the, the it, Nobody owns music. Everybody owns it. It's not owned by anybody. It's owned by everybody. And you can listen and and, and sing what you want to. Do. And so I, I wanted this album to challenge those boundaries. So you, you've got you've got really classic um, operatic uh, masterpieces like Un Amore Così Grande and Non Ti Scordare Me, both wonderful de Curtis and uh, pieces, and, and you know wonderful, very strong pieces of music. But you've also got um, you've also got November Rain, um, Home, the Foo Fighters song, and, and, and some decent classical songs that, that, that are just really relaxing to listen to. So I, I, I really wanted this to cross so many boundaries. Yeah, and it certainly has. Um, your voice has never sounded stronger and better. Do you worry when you wake up in the morning whether you're going to sound like Paul Potts? <laughs> I... I I, I, I keep working on it. I'm working with a really good teacher at the moment, and um, and we and, and 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 I think I'm making making progress. And I, I never want to get to the point where I'm only um, where I'm only as good as I'm only going to only ever going to be. Because it's like climbing climbing the mountain. You know, you don't you, part of me doesn't want to reach the top because it's downhill on the all the way afterwards. Right. And you love to learn. I mean, you love to keep uh, working on your craft and making it stronger and better. Yeah, I've, I've always been someone that's always been. I'm quite a harsh critic on myself. So, and and you do need you do need that 
that to challenge yourself. Um, but I keep working on things I, and um, t- trying to, you know, make myself as technically as good as possible because that's good for the longevity of my voice. So it's um, and 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 also you've got to keep you've got to keep striving to improve. Forgive me for this question; it's slightly impertinent. But as a thick guy from the north with an accent, how do you make singing in Italian, for example, sound great instead of silly? Because it could become parody, couldn't it? How do you make sure that what you're saying is as it should be, and that the enunciation's in the right way, the pronunciation is correct, and that you're delivering it as it should be, as it was written? Um, well, I do. I do speak Italian reasonably well. I, um, I, I spent some time in Italy learning, so I, I, I do speak Italian reasonably well. It's not perfect, but um, I do understand what I'm seeing, which is quite important. You, you can do you can do it phonetically, right. but it, it, when when you sing just phonetically, I think that, you, that you're not really understanding what you're singing. So it's difficult to put the the appropriate feeling into things. Um, so and and with languages for this album and, and for my previous album as well, I, I I went by what the, how the song spoke to me. So when we dance is is in Italian because it's a very Latin, it's a very Latin themed song, and I think it works really well in Italian. But songs like Desperado and November Rain, if you did those in Italian, I don't think they'd sound right. And, right. And also, you know, you've got to be so careful with iconic songs. Because if they're, you know, if you, 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 it's dangerous to play with them. You, 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 you have to give them your own spin, but but you also have to keep faith with the original. Yeah, there's a respect, isn't there, with what you do, and yeah. you do it beautifully. You've had a movie made about you. Firstly, I presume you saw the film, did you? Uh, I've seen it probably in, in, in 11 or 12 different um, premieres in, yeah. in what, so. what goes through your head when you're watching two and a half hours about yourself? <laughs> well, it's really quite strange when when um, James opens his mouth and it's my voice coming out. Um, <laughs> I, did, I, I watched I watched it in Germany, and of course in Germany they they, they dub the dialogue in German. I, I think he both he and Alexander Rachel would have found it quite strange to find that their voice is not actually in the film. Um, because because uh, because in, in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, they they and in Italy as well, they 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 dubbed the film into its original into into their home languages. Wow! So somebody's doing an impression of Cord and doing an impression of you. That's interesting. But it's, but the, the advantage for me is that it's actually my voice still on the singing. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one who made the cut. That's brilliant. <laughs> You can pre-order Paul Part's brand new album now. It's called Home. It really is lovely. And you are a true talent. And uh, what a story. What a career. You're back on tour. You can find out more. Going to his website, just put in Paul Potts tour, and you can find out whether he's coming to a theatre near you. Paul, always lovely to talk to you. Come on again, won't you? 